friends, if you recall in the previous class, we started looking at language elements among various aspects of uh, language, you know, we first started looking at tenses, we looked at um, simple present, present continuous among various other things, their users, common mistakes we do. Then we also looked at subject verb agreement issues. So, continuing our discussion, we will look at some more aspects related to subject verb agreement and then um, we will also look at another important agreement aspect that is between pronoun and its um, referent. So, um, let us first look at subject verb agreement. So, as you can see in these examples, if you have a collective noun in the subject position, then what kind of verb does it take, singular or a plural? Um, actually, it depends on the context. So, look at the examples here. The team is happy about its victory. Here, you are considering the collective noun, the team as one group, so one entity. So, therefore, you have a singular verb here. If you see it as you know um, consisting of many people, you see its plurality, then the verb will also be plural. So, look at this example, the members of the team are ha happy about their victory. So, depending on the context, you know, um, it takes either a singular verb or a plural verb. So, this is what I just mentioned. So, when the collective noun refers to the separate individuals making the grouping, it requires a plural verb. For example, the jury are in dispute about the verdict. So, probably, you know, some are in favor, some are against. So, you want to emphasize that. So, we are using plural verb here. Next aspect is abstract nouns in the subject position. So, um, look at the example, gymnastics. So, a word like gymnastics ends with an S and so, you know, some people um, mistake it for plural, but gymnastics here refers to one entity. So, therefore, it takes singular verb. Same, you know, is case with the word like news. So, here uh, news we need to note that is uncountable. So, we have to say different news stories, um, you if you want to make it a countable. Um, but in its um, form without any, uh, you know, ways of making it a countable like, you know, the news. So, here it always takes singular verb. So, you can see here the news that they will bring the books pleases me. So, also note here that um, this is a clause. So, the main subject here is the news. So, pleases me. So, it takes singular verb. In some sentences, actually verb comes before subject. Look at these examples. Here is my house. This is just one way to solve the problem. There go my chances for a promotion. So, uh, the verb in all these sentences comes first. Nevertheless, uh, the same rules apply here. So, if the subject is singular, the verb is singular. If the subject is plural, the verb is plural. So, for example, look at the first one. My house is singular. So, therefore, the verb is singular. So, one way to solve the problem, it is singular. So, therefore, verb is singular. My chances, this is plural. So, therefore, verb is also plural. With indefinite pronouns, uh, look at an example. We have got five accounts of what happened and none of them agree or agrees which one we use. So, here, so none is an indefinite pronoun. So, what do we do? Do we treat it as a singular or as a plural entity? Um, so, here we have five accounts here. So, 
uh, you know you can treat it as plural. We have got five accounts of what happened and none of them agree. There are other examples. I have ordered the cement, but none has arrived so far. Here, um, cement is uncountable, so it takes singular, so therefore we have used has. I have ordered the shrubs, but none have arrived. So, here shrubs plural, so therefore it takes have. So, you need to really look at the context and then decide what this indefinite pronoun is referring to and then accordingly you need to use either singular or plural verb. There are some sentence constructions with one of. So, what do we do here? Look at the examples. She is one of the passengers who have gathered on the deck. One of the constitutional rights we cherish is freedom. So, here you can see that here it is plural, here it is singular. So, here it again depends on the context. So, if you say she is one of the passengers who have gathered on the deck. So, here you are treating this as one part. So, here who refers to the passengers? Obviously, plural. So, therefore, you have used a plural verb. Here you are here referring to this one and which is freedom. So, therefore, it is one thing. So, therefore, here you use singular verb. We have looked at some cases of uncountable nouns, there are some more examples. For example, money. So, money note is uncountable. Uh, so, money is, but if you say 200 dollars, then um, there are two possibilities. So, how see 200 dollars um, is not a small sum, 200 dollars are spent on the project. So, here you are treating it as one entity. So, here it becomes is. So, there may be 200 dollars. So, you may have 200 notes, but you see all of it as one. Here you are talking about you know each kind like counting each dollar. So, you use here R. Okay. Now, let us do an exercise. Here are four sentences and read these carefully and identify the most appropriate sentence. So, it means out of four, three sentences have some sort of problems with agreement. Only one is the most appropriate. So, what is it? Let us find out. Any educational institution, large or small, plays an important role in the society. Any educational institutions, large or small, plays an important role in the society. Any educational institution, large or small, play an important role in the society. Any educational institutions, large or small, should play an important role in the society. So, now one thing you need to look at is you know with um, word like any um, what do you use? Do you use a singular noun or a plural noun? And then accordingly, so what verb do you use? Singular verb or a plural verb? So, let us look at the last one. Any educational institutions. So, this has any and plural form. Look at second sentence, any and institutions. So, both these are clearly wrong because we do not use plural form with any. Now, we have 1 and 3. Let us look at 3. Any educational institution, so this bit is right, large or small and now we have a problem. With any, it should be singular verb. So, this is wrong. Any educational institution is fine, place. So, this is the correct sentence 
here. Now, let us look at these um, sentences and then um, complete them. The director and, and producer of this movie. So, what do you put? So, note here the director and producer. So, these are referring to only one person. How do we know there is only one article? So, this should be is or something like was. Then, this the information I wanted to convey. Information is uncountable. So, it takes singular. So, depending on the context you use is or was. The government as well as the other sources of the information. So, blank responsible for the for authenticity. So, recall our rule. So, this is additional information. So, we do not consider this. So, we need to look at only this the government. So, we use is or was. I called up to check whether you or Rupa dash coming for the movie. So, here our rule of proximity comes. So, we know with you, you are Rupa is third person. So, it should be is or was. There are two more sentences. Prominent among the items displayed blank the artifacts from the Harappan civilization. So, items displayed and then artifacts from the Harappan civilization. So, actually here um, verb comes first and then the subject. Subject is this artifacts from Harappan civilization are displayed that would be uh, canonical order. So, you use are. The moral of the story is slow and steady blank the race. So, of course, there are two elements here they are combined using the conjunction and but both of these you know we treat it as one because both of them together result in one particular thing. So, we use singular form. So, slow the moral of the story is slow and race. Okay, moving to the next section uh, another important choice um, we need to make is whether to use active voice or passive voice. Uh, we may have been taught that you know there are rules. So, you take an active voice a sentence in active voice and you apply those rules and you convert that particular sentence into passive. So, rules are like you know uh, invert the subject and object things. So, subject becomes object, object becomes subject and then use third form of the verb um, and then use by to introduce um, the subject which we have now moved towards the end and so on. But, if you look at use of passive voice in real life, uh, you know it is not used just you know in a random fashion. Uh, there is a specific uh, motive for using passive voice. Let us look at some examples. If the patient has to be administered a dosage of 2 tablets every 2 hours for 7 days, what is the number of tablets required for the prescribed dosage? So, these are from you know newspaper um, articles, magazine context. So, has to be administered. So, here you can see it is a passive voice. A proposed manufacturing program at the University of Massachusetts is being held up due to a dispute over state budgeting between House Speaker Robert DeLeo and Governor Charlie Baker. So, is being held up. So, this is again passive voice. So, why passive voice is used here? Why not active voice? So, what would be the active voice version of this? When you think of it, then you realize that there is a specific reason for using passive and not active. So, if the patient has to be administered a dosage of tablets, so, um, so what is going to be administered? A dosage of tablets to whom? 
uh, no, there is a patient. So, who is going to administer? So, obviously, it is a, a nurse or a doctor, somebody. So, that is very obvious here. So, therefore, it has been dropped. If it is, you know, if the person, uh, in other words, if subject, you know, were important, you would uh, see um, active voice here. Similarly, here, um, what is being held up? A manu pro proposed manufacturing program at University of Massachusetts. So, who is holding it up? Or, uh, you know, there is some debate going on and as a result, there is no progress. So, that is very obvious here. Uh, so, you want to focus on what is being held up, that is more important. So, therefore, you have here passive voice. So, just like this way, if you look at you know, the context, you can come up with some you know uh, context in a where passive uh, is more likely to be used. So, what are these? First, when you want to hide the identity of the doer purposefully. So, you know the doer of the action, you know the subject but you do not want to reveal that information for various purposes. So, look at this uh, newspaper um, sentence, White House says 25,000 dollar check has been sent to fallen soldier father. So, who has sent? So, White House is you know actually deliberately holding up that information. What has been sent? A check. To whom? Father of the fallen soldier. So, who has sent it? So, that is that information is not given. When the doer is inconsequential or known to audience, uh, something you know you can easily assume as we saw in the previous uh, case. So, a nurse administers dosage. Look at this example, several issues around the GSTN portal have been addressed efforts are on to make the uh, filing smooth, the network's chairman Ajay Bhushan Pandey said. So, have been addressed, what has been addressed, what have been addressed, issues around GSTN portal. So, who has addressed this? Obviously, engineers. So, that is you know inconsequential or you can even guess. So, that is not very important in this context. Issues are important. So, you have a passive voice here. Then, when you want to emphasize on the doer, particularly when the subject phrase is bit long, you have too many details. Look at this example. This problem has also been addressed. So, has been addressed by city based wildlife filmmaker Vilas Kane in his documentary Just Another Death. So, here um, you want to focus on uh, this person and the name of the documentary. So, you are um, giving this information towards the end. So, um, this is a very small thing, this problem has been addressed. So, this probably you have already discussed it in detail. So, this is a very short phrase you can see. So, you have too many details here. So, therefore, you have used um, passive voice. Um, if you also recall, um, when you are saying you know something has been uh, sponsored by somebody. So, for example, from the good old days uh, of DD and uh, advertisement, you may recall it was something like this. This part of the program is sponsored by and then you have a long list of sponsors. So, there are uh, too many phrases um, you want to emphasize on those and therefore, you have a passive voice there. So, um, if you use passive voice without you know uh, careful thought, it leads to very clumsy um, structures. So, it note these are not grammatically incorrect, but they sound odd in the context. Uh, let us look at these sentences. What she is having will be had by 
me. Let us say you have gone to a restaurant, you see somebody you know having something, you do not know what that dish is called. So, then you say this. So, this is sounds very uh, clumsy because uh, there is no reason to use passive and make it complicated. Uh, you can simply say I will have the same thing you know what she is eating. So, that makes more sense. Here you are in the center of action. So, that I should be there in the center of your sentence as well. Second, the results were analyzed by the executive committee. So, you are emphasizing on the executive committee say you are uh, presenting a report. So, what the committee has done? So, you have to put the committee in the active role. So, this you know um, does not uh, emphasize on uh, the role of the executive committee. So, better to say the executive committee analyzed the results and has come to this conclusion. So, that is a better construction. Look at next one. It was decided that we need to shut down the nuclear plant. So, here again it was decided. So, uh, this is completely redundant. So, you can simply um, say that we decided to shut the uh, nuclear plant. So, uh, this is this part is unnecessary. Look at the next one. Since the car was being driven by Michael at the time of the accident, the damages should be paid for by him. So, this sounds very formal and um, uh, you know too complicated sounds like a very legal structure. Um, so, uh, now uh, rephrase this in active voice. So, you will say since Michael was driving the car, um, he should pay for the damages. So, that is very clear. So, the role of this person called Michael is significant here. So, use active voice. So, if you use passive that gets diluted. So, we will now look at an exercise. So, here is an article from a newspaper and I have removed some verb forms including passives. So, let us look at the context and then decide you know, which form the verb in brackets should be used. Seven year old hero saves his family. So, look at the title. So, this must give us some clue. So, this is about a seven year old boy who has done something and that has saved his family. Let us read the text. 911 emergency service operators blank to getting calls from terrified people. But when operator Monique Patino in Norwalk, California blank receive a call from a panic stricken seven year old boy named Carlos whose family blank attack by three armed robbers, it blank the start of an unbearable ordeal for her. So, uh, this is you know in the context of US. So, 911 emergency service operation we know there. So, the first blank you have to use the most appropriate form of the verb be used. So, to getting calls. So, you know here the form is 911 emergency service operators are used to getting calls. So, you be used to that is how we use the construction. But when operator uh, Monique Patino in Norwalk, California. So, obviously um, you know this is uh, talking something which happened in the past. So, past tense received a call from a panic stricken seven year old boy named Carlos whose family. So, by this so, by is the clue for you. So, this has to be passive voice whose family, family you know uh, is um, countable now. Uh, this is sorry, this is a co collectible uh, collective noun. Um, it takes singular form. 
So, whose family was attacked by three armed robbers, it blank, this B is the verb. So, this is past tense. So, it was the start of an unbearable ordeal for her. Let us continue. The boy called 911 from the bathroom. He was still trying to explain. Then the operator heard loud screaming. According to Captain Patrick Maxwell of the Sheriff's Department, at that point the door blank be opened forcefully and the phone blank from Carlos and you can hear the screaming. So, here somebody is acting on Carlos, somebody is acting on the door. Um, who it has been mentioned a group of robbers. So, here we use passive voice at the time at that point the door was opened forcefully and the phone was taken from Carlos and you can hear the screaming. When the intruders realized, so now you know we are switching to narration mode uh, past tense realized Carlos blank the police. So, here there are two events one intruders realizing and Carlos calling the police. So, if you recall our discussion, so there are two connected events and you want to clearly show the uh, sequentiality um, of the events. So, we use past perfect and simple past. So, when the intruders realized Carlos had called the police, they fled, leaving Carlos and his parents unharmed. The three suspects still at large. So, still is the clue. So, now we are coming to present. So, this will be the three suspects are still at large. Continuing, at an interaction with the press later, Ms. Patino blank say wiping away tears. So, this again you know refers to a press meet this is already over. So, past tense. So, Ms. Patino said wiping away tears I still still here is again the clue. So, present tense I still hear. Note here is you know one of those stative words uh, verbs which we do not use in continuous tenses. So, we usually do not say I am hearing, but we say I am listening to something. So, I still hear his little voice on the phone just hearing them screaming and crying for help. I just you know um, so this happened at the time felt the fear through the phone. But Carlos single handedly blank his family. So, this you know refers to uh, an event which has happened, but note that you are referring to it. So, it is relevant. So, here you can say, but Carlos single handedly has saved his family or you can say, um, but Carlos single handedly saved his family. With unusual presence of mind for a 7 year old, he, but now we are going back to the past. So, definitely it has to be past tense. With unusual presence of mind for a 7 year old, he grabbed his 6 year old sister and then continuation locked them both in the bathroom and immediately dialed 911. The final uh, paragraph, Carlos who also blank make an appearance before the press. So, here this is about the press event which is over. So, made an appearance before the press and said the intruders. So, this is a you know the boy here is talking about the past. So, intruders plural were next to the door with my mom and dad and my mom and dad. So, put their hands up put is one word you know which um, does not get ed in the past form and their heads down. He said that his mom so, this is past tense taught him what to do in an emergency or you know if you uh, this has still relevance to the present. So, you can use present perfect also here. Um, his mom has taught him what to do in an emergency and to practice it 
every day. When asked if he was scared, he said just a little bit. Miss Pat, you know, so past event added, he was very brave. I was, he was very brave and now this is, you know, uh, the speaker is still proud of the little boy. So, I am very proud of what he did and he is my little hero. So, note here something, you know, relevant, uh, something a general statement she is making, we switch to present tense. When asked about the screaming, Carlos underscored past tense, his heroic credentials saying it was my sister. So, this is how, you know, we look at the context and uh, we decide uh, which tense to use, past or present and again which form within present and past and then also whether it is uh, active voice or passive. So, the context actually determines. So, obviously, as we saw in some cases, more than one option may also be appropriate. We move to the next section. So, we saw that there is some agreement between subject of the sentence and the verb. If subject is singular, verb is also in singular. If subject is you know plural, uh, verb also has to be in plural. Another agreement you observe in a sentence is between a pronoun and its referent. So, referent means what it refers to. So, we know that pronoun, you know, for example, like he, she, it, these are used after you have introduced a proper noun. Say, you say, John was a good student, you have introduced John and then instead of repeating the name John, you bring in the pronoun he and say, he always scored 90 percent. So, here he is pronoun, John is referent. So, obviously, there has to be some agreement between these two. So, now let us look at some um, issues related to this agreement and how we um, address them. So, as I mentioned, pronoun should agree with the person, number and gender of the noun it refers to. So, um, a verb you know agrees only with uh, number in English, but pronoun um, also yeah, person and gender. Look at examples. Geeta does her work very well. So, Geeta is referent, pronoun is her. So, this is third person, singular and feminine. Gagan keeps his room very dirty. So, Gagan is referent, pronoun is his. This is third person, um, singular, masculine. People keep doing their work in everyday life. So, people and their, so they is third person, uh, plural and it can refer to, you know, either masculine, feminine or both. Okay. So, uh, when you have uh, two reference, uh, one is singular and the other plural. So, um, which pronoun you use? This is, you know, uh, as we saw in the case of subject verb agreement, we apply the rule of proximity, whatever is closest to the pronoun. Look at the example, either the Parkinson's or James will let us use his lawn mower. So, Parkinson's is plural, you are referring to a you know family. James is one person, but this is closest. So, James is third person, singular and masculine gender. But if the order is reversed, so either James or the Parkinson's will let us use their lawn mower. Parkinson's now is the closest, so we use third person plural. When you have a collective noun, so what do you do? 
So, it depends on the context and interpretation. Look at the, the example. The troop of scouts made its way slowly through the woods. So, the troop of scouts. So, you are treating it as one entity. So, you use singular third person. The staff lost their jobs when the factory was closed. So, here the staff you mean many people. So, uh, you have used a plural pronoun. So, it depends on the context and interpretation. So, um, what do you do when you have parallel constructions? So, uh, what is a parallel construction? Um, we will look at it in detail in um, one of the following uh, lectures, but I will explain about it in a very brief manner here. So, you are here comparing two entities. So, similar idea, similar construction. So, that is the idea here. Say for example, you are comparing features of my car with features of your car. So, my English proficiency levels with your English proficiency levels. So, um, you use what we call a parallel construction. Um, so, here again uh, depending on uh, the object in focus, the pronoun we choose. Look at the examples. My mother's car is same as that of my father. So, here you are uh, you know, referring to mother's car. It is a singular object. So, therefore, we use that. Sorry. The problems we face here are same as those faced by any other developing country. Here problems plural, so therefore those. So, remember if it is singular that, if it is plural we use those. Now, there is some ambiguity in these sentences because of pronoun use. So, let us look at these examples and uh, remove ambiguity. Harry told Will that he was putting on weight. So, pronoun is he, but what does it refer to? It can actually refer to Harry, it can also refer to Will. So, who is putting on weight here? It is not clear. So, you have to you know make it specific. So, you say that um, Harry um, mentioned in a conversation with Will that you know Harry he was putting on weight and he uh, told it to Will. So, you change the construction. Look at the second one. If the children do not eat all fruits, put them in the fridge. So, them here can refer to fruits, it can also refer to children. So, uh, so what do you hear, you know, um, uh, uh, what are you actually here referring to? So, you need to hear um, clearly specify. So, if the children do not eat all fruits, put the remaining fruits in the fridge. Professor Janin asked Caroline if she could rewrite her paper for her English class. So, here again um, she, her, her. So, uh, it there are two um, reference Janin and Caroline. So, uh, this becomes very ambiguous. So, you can very clearly say Professor Janin um, asked Caroline to resubmit um, the paper for English class. So, you remove ambiguity. Since I knew that our employees found their chairs uncomfortable, I replaced them with new ones. So, here, so them can refer to, can also refer to employees. So, since I knew that our employees found their chairs uncomfortable with the new ones. So, um, the answers are here. 
So, you can say something like this use a direct quotation to avoid ambiguity. So, as I mentioned you here use the referent then so you remove uh, pronouns here unnecessarily um, you let the context decide who has asked who. So, Professor Janin teacher student. Um, so, here again you remove a pronoun use a, uh, the proper noun I mean use the referent. Okay. Now, um, we have some more sentences here. Um, the problem here is the referent is not very um, uh, specific, it is not explicit. So, uh, so, to understand what the problem is, so let us look at first one. The movie theater is closed today, so we cannot see one. So, you have used pronoun one, but what is it referring to? You mean movie, but you have not mentioned movie earlier, you have only mentioned the movie theater. So, you need to say the movie theater is closed today, so we cannot see a movie today. So, you have to you know uh, make it specific. Sometimes you know um, it can become more complex see as I pass the tiger's cage it roared at me. So, it here refers to tiger, but you have referred to tiger's cage. So, you say as I pass the cage the tiger roared at me. When Alia accidentally slammed down on um, his car's accelerator instead of the brake, it rolled forward. So, here it refers to car, but you have not referred to car. So, you simply say the car rolled forward, you have referred to accelerator here. In the report, it suggested that we needed to be more attentive to employee suggestions. So, here, so um, in the report it suggested that you what does it refer to the report, but you have started the sentence like in the report. So, um, you have to make it clear. So, you say the report suggested that we needed to be more attentive to employee suggestions. So, you rewrite the particular this particular sentence. So, I have um, uh, given answers I mean um, sentences which have been you know corrected. So, the theater is closed today, so we cannot see a movie. As I passed its cage the tiger roared at me. So, it is here refers to tiger. So, this you can use. When Alia accidentally slammed down on her car's accelerator instead of the brake, the car rode forward. So, you have used the car, you have removed the pronoun it. The report suggested that we needed to be more attentive to employee suggestions. So, you have used this thing, the report, you have completely you know removed that ambiguity um, from here. <coughs> so, this is how you know uh, you remove a problem uh, uh, regarding use of uh, pronouns uh, without an explicit uh, referent. So, um, so quickly summing up, so uh, pronoun uh, has to agree with its referent in person, number and gender. Um, one of the common problems is you know you have a pronoun it can refer to more than one person. So, uh, it can uh, lead to ambiguity. Another problem we saw is the referent is not explicit. You assume you know it is there, but you have not stated it explicitly. So, you need to keep these things in mind when you are using pronoun. Um, so, moving on, uh, we look at you know um, 
use of participials and uh, gerunds. So, uh, what are these? Um, um, so, a participial you know is an adjective it ha which you have formed from a verb. So, there are two kinds. So, ing participles also known as present participles then ed which are also known as past participles. Look at uh, examples a sleeping baby. So, sleeping here is present participle a used car it is past participle. So, this has come from the verb sleep and this has come from the verb use. So, um, an active voice verb becomes an ing participle for example, see this the custom fascinates me. The fascinating custom has been the subject of many books. So, fascinates the custom fascinates me has become the fascinating custom. A passive voice verb becomes an ed. See, my car was used for 10 years. So, by me, by somebody. So, that is the um, assumption here. So, uh, my car was used becomes used car. So, um, so, looking at you know present participle and uh, past participle, uh, so we use present participle. So, when you know um, the focus is on uh, the doer, focus is on what we call the traditional subject, you know, the initiator of an action. We use past participle, uh, you know, regarding um, uh, objects which are acted upon towards which some action is directed. So, we say uh, fascinating custom. So, custom fascinates me. So, custom is you know in the traditional subject position there. When you say the used car, so, uh, the, so the car here is an object position. So, uh, the action is directed towards it. So, there is somebody there, an agent, a person and uh, is directing action towards this object. So, this distinction we need to keep in mind when using um, present participles and past participles. For example, if you say I am boring, it means that is your characteristic. You are not a fun person to hang out with, you do not have many friends, people do not like to go out with you. So, maybe you know that is uh, your characteristic. So, when you say I am boring, you have used uh, present participle, you are initiating action towards somebody else. So, here you know people around you. When you say I am bored, so, you have used past participle. So, action has been directed towards you. So, maybe you are sitting in a class and you are bored. You have gone to watch a movie, but you know you do not like it. Uh, you find it bit uh, dragging and so on. So, you say I am bored here. Somebody else is making you bored. So, this distinction we need to keep in mind. Um, there are also you know what we call uh, perfect forms. So, we use these to combine sentences. Look at these examples. The students had solved most of the problems without any help. Having solved most of the problems without any help, the students were exhilarated. So, you have two clauses here. You can combine it using um, you know participial form. So, um, usually you know this is the uh, a special form. You can also use uh, present continuous say walking um, along the footpath I found a gold coin. So, walking along that is present participle uh, I found it is a main clause. So, you have combined this using
present participle. Here, this is a, you know, a special form having is present uh, participle, uh, but you know you are also focusing on completion of one action. So, uh, for connecting we need present participle, but the, you also want to emphasize that that one event is over. So, having solved the students were accelerated, having completed uh, their homework the kids went out to play. So, uh, in such context we use uh, this kind of perfect form in participles. Um, so, we use um, these participial phrases to modify nouns and pronouns. So, you can see here students planning to graduate in June. So, planning to graduate you have you know um, use this to modify the students. So, airport security will question anyone found with a suspicious object. So, found with a suspicious object you know is modifying this. Closely related you know form is uh, charant. So, these also have ing uh, in them, but they are different from participles. Let us look at examples. So, these are actually nouns made from verbs by adding ing. Uh, for example, swimming is my favorite hobby. So, swimming is swim is the verb you have added ing then it has become noun. So, sometimes you know you tend to get confused. So, there is an ing form there. So, is it a continuous tense? Um, then what is it? Is it a participial? Uh, no. So, note that you know gerunds can stand alone. So, swimming here stands on its own. This is you know uh, functioning like a noun. So, instead of it you can put something else say you can say um, painting is my favorite hobby, um, uh, writing uh, novels is my favorite hobby. Um, so, you can put uh, something else here in, in this position. So, this is perfectly uh, functioning like a noun. But uh, in continuous tense you know you will have an auxiliary like uh, uh, John is walking. So, you have is or uh, was um, were these kinds of you know auxiliaries you have. And as we saw earlier uh, participles uh, they come with something else they modify a noun or a pronoun. So, they do not stand alone. So, that is the distinction. So, based on a verb you know um, they express an action or um, state of being. However, since a gerund functions as a noun it occupies some positions in a sentence that a noun ordinarily would. For example, subject, direct object, subject complement, object of preposition. So, all these things are um, uh, possible. Uh, Let us look at examples. So, gerund as subject traveling might satisfy your desire for new experiences. So, here traveling is gerund arts and it is working um, in the subject position. The study abroad program might satisfy your desire for new experiences. Here the gerund has been you know you can see uh, removed. Here, this is a regular um, noun phrase. Gerund as direct object, they do not appreciate my singing. So, this is your you know gerund here. So, he, in the second example, you have a, a different noun phrase. gerund as subject complement. So, my cat's favorite activity is sleeping. So, sleeping here is complement for this. 
my cat's favorite food is salmon. So, here you can see this is uh, a regular construction without a gerund. Um, you can use gerund as an object of preposition. The police arrested him for speeding. So, for speeding. So, this is gerund here. The police arrested him for criminal activity. This is a regular noun phrase. So, um, summing up today, we looked at um, some aspects of uh, subject verb agreement and we looked at when passive voice is used. We also did an exercise where based on the context, we supplied the most appropriate form of the verb and then we moved to a pronoun referent agreement and we observed that pronoun must agree with its referent in terms of person, number and gender. Then in the final section, we looked at two you know uh, elements which are related to verbs, participles and gerunds. So, participles are derived from verbs and they function as adjectives. Gerunds are derived from verbs, but they function as nouns. So, that is the distinction. Thank you. Thank you.